It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. This is IRG's Health Talk. Back to Tom Hutler and Shannon O'Kelly. Next guest, Dr. Zachary DeBoard, cardiac and cardiothoracic surgeon. We're talking about atrial fibrillation. A lot of people call it AFib. And here is Dr. DeBoard with Shannon O'Kelly. Dr. DeBoard, welcome to Health Talk. How are you? Doing great. Happy to be here. Well, thanks for joining us. We're glad you came down. Boy, you got a big job, don't you? You're a cardiac and a cardiothoracic surgeon. And I know our listeners out there right now are going, wow. So, I mean, I want to know about this guy's training because that's a big job. You're working with people's heart, not any small task. Tell us about your training, your interests, and where you work. Give us a little background. Sure. So I'm an adult cardiac surgeon at Providence Everett. And uh, I had a circuitous route how I got to find my way to be a heart surgeon. And I never really had much interest in it and always had an interest in surgery and found my way to Seattle after growing up in Alaska and uh, did med school and undergrad here and uh, went off to California for general surgery training. And by luck of one of my uh, co-residents going on vacation, I got to rotate on the cardiac surgery service. And once I saw kind of the nitty gritty of heart surgery, I just thought, wow, this is wonderful. I learned more about it and thought, you know, this is this is something where I can offer an improvement in not just quality of life, but life-saving, life-extending techniques, kind of with a lot of variety of pathology for patients. So after uh, surgical training in California, I went over to uh, the University of Utah where I did my uh, fellowship in adult cardiac surgery. You, know, you and I were talking offline and just kind of jokingly, when, it, when you talk about cardiothoracic and cardiac surgeons, kind of talk about three areas, maybe the plumber looking at blood flow, uh, the electrician looking at the electrical aspect of the heart, and then maybe the carpenter, the, the, the surgeon that maybe is going to rebuild the heart, you know, valves, et cetera. What area do you practice and what's your focus? Right. So most of us are kind of like the general contractors with some <laughs> nuanced interest, interest in, uh, like you said, I'm more of a kind of a plumber and an electrician for the heart. So a lot of uh, complex uh, coronary disease or bypass surgery, which we do in kind of a unique fashion at uh, Prov Everett, but also uh, interest in uh, electrical components of the heart and rhythm issues like atrial fibrillation or AFib. Right. You know, I, I just want to ask you from a personal standpoint, because I've always had a lot of admiration for anybody um, that's doing the work that you do because you're dealing with one's heart, you know, and this is an organ that's pretty impressive. I mean, it beats 72 times a minute, how many minutes a day, how many minutes a year, how many minutes in a lifetime. I mean, if you did the math, it's an amazing, amazing organ. And it does that through electrical impulses. And that's what we're going to talk about is how the electrical impulse kind of beats your heart. Cause I don't think the average person out there is going, wow, my heart muscle fires because it gets an electrical kind right. of uh, uh, impulse. Talk right. about that. And the electricity of the heart. So to think about the electrical function of the heart, it's kind of got these natural pacemakers and they're just kind of ticking away, telling the muscle cells to beat in a coordinated fashion. So you got to think about the heart as kind of a four, four chambers. So there's two on top, two on the bottom. So I really work on atrial fibrillation. And the problem there is what's going on in the top chambers. And there's kind of two power substations in the heart. One at the top which is the main power plant. There's one right in the middle, and then there's a bunch of power lines that run out to the rest of the houses, essentially, which are the muscle cells. And so it's those top two. When they start communicating inappropriately, that's when people get sick. That's where this AFib thing comes in. And it's important that um, our listeners understand that it's built that way because the top of the heart has to fire first to push the blood in the bottom part. Exactly. And that blood in that bottom part is important that there's pressure or hemodynamics there so we get an ejection fraction. So You're right. that electrical impulse is has to be timely and rhythmic. And this is where you come in. Tell us about AFib and what's going on there. Atrial fibrillation. Yeah, so atrial fibrillation or AFib, which a lot of people call it, um, it's a complex disease. And this is why people spend four or five days at conferences yelling at each other about it. So <laughs> there's a lot of different types of AFib out there. That's there's how some electricians that, that, are. That's how electricians exactly. are. Exactly. <laughs> we got we to get really nitty gritty yeah. about it and you know, get all fired up about something. So there's a lot of different types of AFib. There's AFib that comes and goes. There's AFib that sticks around permanently. And then there's kind of an in-between. And so our best population studies show that there's about two and a half million people walking around with kind of more complex AFib. But whenever that was critiqued and saying, well, what about these folks who are dealing with AFib that comes and goes? That estimate is probably around maybe 12 million people in the United States. So the problem with AFib is it's not just an electrical problem with the heart. It creates inflammatory changes to the heart and fibrosis and can lead to heart failure and a variety of other complications like strokes. More with Dr. DeBoard and Shannon O'Kelly right after this timeout on Como. 
It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Now back to IRG's Health Talk. Dr. Zachary DeBoard and Shannon O'Kelly continue to talk about AFib, atrial fibrillation now on Como. Dr. DeBoard, cardiothoracic surgeon from Providence Everett, talking about AFib. And you were mentioning AFib comes in two forms. Basically, you have people that have it, and then you have people that have it intermittently. And, and how would I know I have AFib? I mean, do I feel a flutter? What do I know? Yeah, so people describe this huge nebulous kind of cornucopia of symptoms. I mean, there some people just feel sick to their stomach. Some people pass out. They feel chest pain or pressure, their activity intolerance, exercise intolerance, palpitations. The list kind of goes on. Then you have the folks who have the unfortunate time of figuring this out where they show up at the hospital and their AFib's too fast. So they have to get shocked essentially to get out of the AFib or they have a complication from it like we talked about stroke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of symptoms and things like that that you're going to try to investigate. And once you define it as AFib, I mean, do you do this with an EKG, a simple EKG? Do you have to do like an echo? Do you have to do some kind of MRI testing? How do you confirm the type of AFib? And then let's talk about how you intervene as a surgeon. Right. So normally we're working in conjunction, which is great about our program. We have a very robust team approach. So we use general cardiologists and specialized cardiologists, kind of more of the electricians of the medicine world, electrophysiologists. And so our work in conjunction gives a very comprehensive analysis on how we determine what the underlying rhythm is and how much of a rhythm burden they have. So we do things like Holter monitors or loop recorders, which give people kind of a continuous feedback on what the problem or how much of a burden this is to them. If you have to fix this, your technique is pretty sophisticated and and, and fairly I mean, technology-wise, it's, it's it's pretty cool what you're doing. Talk about what you do, because are you doing an ablation, uh, so to speak? Right. Or is, tell, tell our listeners what an ablation is, because and how do you know what parts of those fibers and areas of those electrical wires to actually ablate or burn whatever you're doing? Good question. So this is where we get deep into the weeds with this. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I just love it. So uh, <laughs> if you've kind of failed medicine and pills aren't working to keep that heart rhythm uh, functioning appropriately, then you kind of find your way to an electrophysiologist or a surgeon for some sort of ablation. What we're doing is trying to create scar in portions of the heart to kind of box out these wrong electrical impulses and box in the right ones. And so now we're seeing that if you create what we call a biatrial or full maze, We've got 85, 90% success rates that people are off of rhythm medicines, off of blood thinners, and they're in a normal sinus or normal heart rhythm at five and 10 years out. Pretty good results. Yeah. So in summary, as we wrap up here, I mean, this is uh, obviously fantastic and fascinating information. In summary, you're going to burn those fibers, scar those areas down to eliminate that overshock or that arrhythmia and that, that, that controls that AFib problem, essentially. Right. And so our goal is to, one, create that scar. But if we can't fix your scar because you've had AFib for too long, there's other ways that we can control or limit the potential for problems like a stroke. So we can do little minimally invasive procedures, small incisions, three little five millimeter holes where we're putting a clip on a part of the heart, getting you off blood thinners. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen having a bleeding problem or a stroke. Wow. Dr. DeBoard, thank you so much for your time. Hey, we have to have you back. You have a lot of information. I'd like to share some of your information with our listeners. But for today, you did a great job. Thanks for the information. Happy to be here. Thanks again. You've been hearing Dr. Zachary DeBoard, cardiac and cardiothoracic surgeon for Providence Medical Group and thoracic surgery in Everett. And you can find out more at providence.org. And AFib, Shannon, you hear people talking about this. This is something that it's good we're learning more about it today. Absolutely. I mean, those people out there that have it, there's 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 enhanced and advanced treatment available. And some of the stuff Dr. DeBoard's doing is pretty fantastic and amazing. Yeah, it really is amazing to see the progress it has made. Uh, we're going to be back with our final segment right after this on Como.